This is a love story between bees, farmers, and famine. It all began two years ago with a plague and a sting. Coffee rush struck Nicaragua. I'm a fifth generation coffee producer and I've never seen a plague like this in my lifetime. Coffee rust can lower yields up to 85%. While my family was fortunate enough to be able to afford the fungicide needed to combat the plague, it was devastating for all the small scale coffee producers, some of them my neighbors, which are the majority producers in the country. My mother sent me to go check on the fields. And I remember walking for hours through the green mountainous fields of our farm and noticing honeybees acting strange. I found a massive swarm tucked in beneath a tree, which made me curious, maybe a bit too curious. <laughs> First the plague, then the sting. Once I got home, I started researching bees to make sure my face wasn't permanently inflamed. It wasn't, but my heart was. The more I learned about bees, the more fascinated I became. Bees are a super organism. They work together, collectively, and can achieve incredible feats. I knew they pollinated flowers, but what I didn't know was that domestic hives can improve crop yields between 10 to 30%. I knew they produced honey for beekeepers. I learned the business, but I became more intrigued the more I learned about organic honey. That the US, the US and Europe import nearly all of their organic honey. The price of organic honey has doubled in the past 10 years. And that others were already exporting organic honey from Nicaragua. This sounded like a sweet deal for me and my family. <laughs> but as I fell in love with beekeeping as an opportunity, I realized it was also a way to help my neighbors, the small scale coffee growers and the millions of smallholder farmers across Latin America. Honey production can increase their crop yields, they can have a second source of income through the sale of honey, and they can even decrease their risk as honey prices are much more stable than coffee prices. So after months of researching and planning, the numbers look great. I bought 500 hives and I began producing organic honey. Two years later, Hikota is now the third largest producer in the country. Hikota is the name of my company, and my name is Alejandro Alvarez. So far, business has been great. But the cost of operating our hives across 80 different farms has inhibited our growth. So we need to be more like the bees to create a super organism business, an inclusive business model that works in partnerships with smallholder farms. The mentors at Fledge helped me develop this model over the past two months. I met with at least 20 different, different mentors. I felt like a bee bouncing from flower to flower, soaking up information and ideas. It was challenging, but great. So here's how it works. We partner with smallholder farmers in rich biodiverse areas. We train each farmer for free as a beekeeper. We then purchase, package, and export all of the honey that they produce. Hikota is a certified organic producer and as such is able to certify its partners. That lets us pay a premium price for their honey as all the honey that we sell is certified organic. 75% is sold in bulk to international markets without us having to build our brand, while the other 25% is sold under our Hikote brand name. As we build our brand, our revenues will rise and this will shift. Across the whole Nicaragua today, there are just 25,000 hives. But with this model, there's enough farmers and there's enough space to grow this to 300,000. The opportunity in Nicaragua alone is big enough for us to grow a hundred times. To meet this opportunity and to grow beyond Nicaragua into Central America, we invite you to join us in this love story between bees, farmers, and family. Thank you.